Right, uh, uh, a little, little over an hour ago, LFR units were dispatched to the location right behind us uh, for a report of some type of explosion that took place, and they had a car on fire inside of the garage. Uh, units responded, and on arrival, we found smoke coming from the building. Uh, what made this fire really difficult is the fact that the wind is out of the southwest, and the big open garage doors you see behind me were open right into the fire. Uh, so it kind of helped to fan some things at that point in time. Uh, crews immediately began working, uh, deployed numerous hand lines. Due to the wind and the extent of the fire, uh, this was made what we call a defensive fire uh, from the very early moments that we got here, meaning that uh, it was just a little bit too dangerous and the fire was already advanced enough that we weren't able to take crews and go inside like we normally would uh, on a structure and, and conduct what we call offensive or interior functions. Was there any concern about the fire spreading to adjacent buildings? That was our biggest concern all along uh, and at one point in the fire we, all, we had uh, some pretty heavy direct flame impingement on the structure that sits just east of the building behind me. Uh, crews did a great job and we, we quickly deployed numerous hand lines off of multiple companies, hooked up several different hydrants at the time and got a lot of water where we needed it uh, the most. Uh, in, and we were able to just stay ahead of the curve and keep it confined to the building of origin. So uh, was there a, some kind of a popping sound? We understood that there was some, not an explosion, but a popping sound? I'm not sure. I, I can't expand on that right now at this point. It could have easily been uh, some electrical lines or other things in there. And, and frequently when you involve car fires, um, you can get some popping sounds. You can get tires exploding and things like that that sound pretty loud. So. We weren't really on location at that point yet, so I can't really expand on it. Well, there is a, that back half of the building has now pretty much collapsed. Uh, is there still active flames back there? Have you guys been able to get that guy down? So right now you can see that we still have quite a few hand lines and a couple of our aerial devices going. We still have some pockets. Uh, again, as we had to stay exterior and do more of a defensive fire approach, which was protect all of the exposures and keep this from traveling down the block, we weren't able to really get inside and do any offensive, really get after it type of firefighting. So we had to stay more exterior. Uh, it really allowed the fire, especially with the wind and once a couple of the windows went out, uh, really allowed the fire to, to progress from kind of a south direction to a north direction. Um, with that being the case, uh, as you can imagine, it really got after quite a few of the structural elements. We did have roof collapse about a half an hour into the structure. Uh, and once it pulled down that roof, it kind of puts a lot of pressure. And uh, it was probably 20 minutes or 30 minutes ago, we did have a, a west wall that actually collapsed. Uh, fortunately for us, we kind of anticipate these things. We had crews that were at a safe working distance and, and nobody was uh, injured or caught in any type of collapse scenario. So the building was intact when you guys showed up on scene? The building was, uh, was very much intact uh, with heavy smoke showing uh, from pretty much the front. Uh, I was coming out of the front and progressing from a south to a north. We had uh, smoke coming out of the roof lines uh, pretty much from north to south. How often do you guys have to use those, that aerial? How often do they have to go up on those ladders for, to fight fires? Um, typically, we're using these on, on a lot bigger fires, and, and this, of course, uh, actually went to a third alarm status at one time. So. We had uh, approximately six engine companies and three truck companies uh, operating in the area uh, just, again, to make sure that we got the right water in the right places and, and to handle numerous water streams that we were, we were actually directing. And I know you said it started as a car fire. Any idea what began that? Um, that was the initial report that it was a car. Uh, without our inspector talking uh, and doing his investigative work, everything is still under investigation. Uh, there really is no known cause or, or anything leading to that at this point. Any concern or anticipation for more collapse to the structure? Um, the whole, uh, the whole, what we call the delta or the east side of the structure, again, when that roof collapses, it kind of goes down in a V-shape, uh, and then it puts a lot of weight and pressure. Uh, the the east side of the structure is a, is a complete... Uh, exclusion zone and we don't have any crews operating anywhere near that other side and we anticipated that collapsing uh, probably 20-30 minutes ago 
and, and we've just kept crews away from that whole area. So yes, we're at very much risk of uh, having some further collapse, uh, especially with the amount of water that we're actually using to, to get out some of those hot spots. It's probably too early to say, but any preliminary sense of how much the, the cost of, of this for the, the folks there? At this point in time, uh, I wouldn't even know where to begin on, on trying to estimate a cost. Uh, again, we've been we've been functioning all, all on scene pretty much in the uh, firefighting mode for quite some time. Uh, all of that will be established and put out here at a later time. And just to clarify, only this building has been on fire, not the neighboring building. However, they were in danger. At this time, only the building that that, that originally was we were dispatched to. That is the only uh, building that sustained uh, heavy fire damage. Uh, crews did a great job by deploying a lot of those other hand lines and we directed them a lot at that east side at a, just to protect that building next door, what we call an exposure. Uh, and and we, did, we did well, the crews worked hard and it's still standing with just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of smoke and, and maybe a little bit of heat damage to the siding. Uh, nothing really was involved on the interior. Thank you, Chief. Oh, you're very welcome. You. Go well, ahead. We still have you. Uh, do you know anything about the uh, fire down by Wilderness Park? <laughs> Excuse me. No, I, I don't know. Uh, it, that was taking place, and we had a number of resources headed down to that direction. Uh, this one kicked in, and uh, so we redirected some of our resources, myself included, uh, and, and here we are. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. Appreciate it. Hey, you're very welcome. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming out.